on guys welcome back to mountain men outdoors this weekend uh is really going to start our trapping season trapping season's actually been in for a little while but right deer in mouth it's right there in the middle of deer season and we're concentrating on getting deer for the freezer but uh rifle season went out and we're back to bow season sorry about the wind i'm sure it's probably loud on the camera but if you can see back here behind us we're going to go we couldn't get across the river from the other side, so we're in on, we had to come the long way and uh, we have to go a long ways on the four wheeler this morning, but we're gonna ease down here in the bottom uh, along next to the river. And uh, Jeremiah's had his eye on some places, some beaver slides and some crossover slides. A lot of, lot of beaver time. And uh, we actually already seen some sign on the other side this morning, but uh, we've got, to, got the old four wheeler loaded up with traps and everything and uh we're gonna go set some 330s so some muskrat traps all right guys stay tuned to the river the river is just right over here across this little hump but on this side we've got a drainage ditch that these beaver have been using this drainage ditch goes way up through here but we've got a couple slides right in here that's where our first trap's going to go uh, the beavers have been using this as a little crossover point between here and the river First trap to see it. Here on the slide. I need to fix that trigger. Brush it up just a little bit. That way uh, it narrows it down to a little better choke point. That's the first one. Got about five more. Alrighty guys, this is a uh, number 330 on bear. I don't know the specific brand, but uh, I think it's about the biggest size you can get. And uh, my trigger, I've widened it out in a big like an A, like an A frame. So that way it's got more surface area to hit it and knock that uh, trigger off and get caught. But uh, these are huge and they're stout. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it I'm going to set him down and size it and make sure we got plenty of room for it, and which we do. I believe it ought to be all right right about there, you know. All right, check your ground and make sure you, where your hoop, hoops is going to be. Make sure you can uh, get a strike in there. Set it back up there and kind of eyeball it. things are so stout we're gonna need a setting tool and uh, when you mash down on it be sure not to get your fingers in between it because that's it's like a big steel pair of scissors so you don't want to cut your finger off yeah that sucks trust me <laughs> <laughs> don't end up like your daddy yeah so we can get him set up on these rings here watch your fingers now. 
push down. Don't curl your fingers. You push down with your palms. All right, just keep your fingers outside. Use your palms. Okay. Yeah. I'm more worried about the daggone setting tool than I am the trap. I can hold it. Once you get them together, you should be able to hold it, but. Not like it. Knees up on them. Good job. It's good to put something on the bottom of that where you can get good pressure on it. But always keep them safeties on. And when safeties flip up one way, keep them on the bottom when you set your trap. That way you can flip it up instead of wrapping your arm around it. It's a lot easier. It's a lot safer. This one's been up where we caught a stick with it. <laughs> so, show I hope, up close here. I hope it's been up tomorrow because we've got a beaver's head crammed in it. It's safety. Can you see it good? Mm -hmm. And safety's down here on the bottom. So we'll work you, it there, show. When you squeeze that down, you can flip it right over instead of reaching down and, and trying to flip it like that. It's a lot easier to go up and under it where it's a lot safer. Because if it springs, it's going to spring out. And you don't want your fingers, hands up and in there. So well, you can just flip it like that and ease off of it and it's good. Yeah. Lay my stick down so I can get some more leverage. your safety is where you can throw it on. You gotta put that body weight into it, don't you? <laughs> yeah, 135 pounds of it. Fine job, fine job. So now, your safeties is holding that, holding that, uh, that trap from getting you. <laughs> All right, let's get him in the hole. Taking all these, uh, these stiffer stock pieces, burying them down in the soft mud in the on the bank here. Kind of weave it in there. 
the way he has to go through. We don't want him getting out or getting by the trap. And uh, for those who don't know, this is a kill trap. But it's pretty good and humane, ain't it? Yeah, it's it kills lights out. Careful. Alright guys. So yeah, it discourages them pretty good from going anywhere but through the trap. Yeah, I'd say you're right. Alright guys, well we got them set. We'll uh, be back in the morning and see what we've got. We're back over here checking these beaver traps and uh, muskrat traps we set. The water is still too high to cross to ford the river and uh, we're running out of daylight this evening. And, and uh, by the time we got off work and would have got around several miles around and come in on the other side of the river, um, it would have been after dark and I wouldn't have been able to video. So Jeremiah's throwed his waders on and he's walked across something I want to mention um, about the first part of the video when we were setting those 330 conner bears I didn't realize until uh, we done got them set that we by law we were supposed to have them at least half submerged so before we left we went back and fixed those and uh, I just wanted to make that point because I don't want to get into any trouble. I don't want to do anything wrong. And uh, of course we we fixed them before we left so everything's good. Now we've checked these traps a couple times now and uh, he's had some muskrats. He had one that had actually chewed a foot off um, before we got here. But uh, hadn't had any luck on beaver yet. Jeremiah's working his way up the river right now. I'll see, I'm gonna stay on this side. I didn't bring my waders, but I should be able to video him if he's got anything. So I'll get up here and try to catch up with him. Turn you back on in just a minute. <laughs> yeah. I bet you. I bet you he'd come out there and couldn't go nowhere. Come right around here. Yeah. All right, guys. That's the last trap on the river, and uh, didn't do no good. He's gonna go ahead and pull all the traps. They're all on that side of the river, and uh, since the water's been so high. He's going to pull them all, and uh, we're going to set them back here in a couple of days on this side of the river. We've got to get some casters in and some stuff because there's so, such a big area, it's hard to pinpoint where they're going to be at. There's so many places they can be. So, all right, we've got just a few more traps to check, and it'll be after dark. And these are all coon and uh, fox sets. So, we'll turn you back on here in just a little bit.
it's cold and it's snowing and uh, we've checked all of our traps. We had uh, a half a dozen over on the river for uh, beaver and muskrat and then we had a half a dozen here at the house and uh, nothing seems to be moving right now. We've had a little bit of bait messed with but uh, nothing's gotten a trap. So sometimes it's like that but uh, we'll get cranking here, here before you know it. So y'all stay tuned. Thanks for watching.